Coming up, dueling visits, President Biden and former President Trump, both at the southern border to address the growing migrant crisis. We're live with the latest. Plus, the latest in the investigation into the murder of a Georgia nursing student. What we've learned about the illegal immigrant charged with her murder. And Texas burning by fire, scorching the state. The help firefighters are getting from Mother Nature. News Nation Now continues. I'm Nick Smith in for Nicole Burley. And we start this hour on the southern border, where in the coming hours, we'll hear from President Biden and former President Trump on the migrant crisis. Both 2024 candidates are heading to Texas, the former president scheduled to land in about 30 hours. We'll have team coverage. News Nation's Brooke Schaefer is waiting President Biden's arrival in Brownsville. But we'll start this hour with Ali Bradley in Eagle Pass. And Ali, even before he lands, we've already heard from the Trump campaign. Yeah, you're exactly right here, Nick. We're expecting the former president's arrival here any moment to Shelby Park, which is very well fortified right now. Before we get to the Trump campaign, uh, let's go over to Mexico really quickly. You can see the Mexican federales lining the riverbank over on that side, ensuring that no one crosses into Texas the Rio Grande illegally. So that happens just about every time we see Governor Abbott down here. We know Governor Abbott's going to be accompanying the former president. So let's get to that uh, campaign statement here. So we heard from the Trump campaign, a spokesperson saying, quote, today, President Trump will visit the crime scene at Biden's open border, where Joe Biden's failure has resulted in more than 9 million illegal immigrants, 27 tons of deadly fentanyl, and dangerous criminals crossing the border since he took office. Now, we do expect the former president to continue that rhetoric while he's down here kind of pointing the finger at the Biden administration, again, accompanied by Texas Governor Greg Abbott as he continues to fortify the border down here under Operation Lone Star, something he says that the Biden administration is falling down on. So they'll certainly be talking about that and discussing the progress of Operation Lone Star. Now, despite the governor's efforts, though, a stark contrast what President Trump is going to see here by way of numbers versus what President Biden is seeing over there in the Rio Grande Valley in Brownsville. Hundreds of people continue to cross into this area, into this sector every single day. Just this morning, we were there as a group of about 60 crossed. And yesterday, we saw several groups cross all throughout the day. Sources tell me that overnight, they apprehended more than 100 people uh, out there in the elements in the dark, trying to round people up that were trying to evade and also self-surrendering. Now, in these groups that we encountered, you could see five unaccompanied minors there. Now, I was there as these children were being encountered by Border Patrol. Texas DPS says they all came over unaccompanied, no parents, no guardians, but they did have note cards and addresses written on them where they were eventually going to go. Now, these groups are what they call give-ups. They're self-surrendering to agents. They're not trying to get away. Texas DPS Lieutenant Chris Oliveras today telling our Marky Martin what the former president is going to be seeing when he's down here and what he can expect. Take a listen here. One thing is the former president will get to see firsthand how Texas was able to stem that flow by placing concertina wires, shipping containers along the river, and being able to prevent any legal border crossings from taking place. And ever since then, ever since the beginning of January, uh, there has not been any illegal border crossings at the Shelby Park area. And if there has been, uh, those individuals are single adults and they will be, they have been arrested for state charges. So there's a difference in the contrast between the areas. So Texas, of course, making moves to kind of keep people out of the state, but the ones that do enter in, we've got source information here, Nick, confirming and a, a nationwide directive that went out, an internal memo that advised these different sectors along the southern border to get their holding capacity numbers down below 75%. So we're talking about get those individuals out as quickly as possible, whether it be through a notice to appear or if it's one of those appearances on their own recognizance. Nick, they're trying to get those numbers down. Ali, before I let you go, I have a quick question. You showed us these groups that are self-surrendering, these give-ups to uh, Border Patrol. Are agents dealing with other issues out there right now? And what happens when some of those give-ups are like those minors that you showed us? Yes, yeah, so what's really shocking here is Border Patrol is actually grateful, though the agents I talked to, for what Governor Abbott's doing down here at Shelby Park, because that frees them up to go after the people who are trying to evade. Those are the gotaways, right? Those are people that have been seen on a camera or in a pursuit or bailout and not apprehended. Now, 
when they are apprehended, they, they're no longer gotaways, right? My sources have, have apprehended several of these people trying to evade. Get this, Chief Owens just releasing information that 120,000 people have successfully evaded law enforcement since October 1st, since this fiscal year began. Last year, we saw about 600,000. So right now, we're already at 120,000 just a couple months in, Nick. And when it is unaccompanied minors in those groups, if they're gotaways, we wouldn't know because they're not apprehended. Now, if they are apprehended by Border Patrol, if they're encountered, they're going to be turned over to Health and Human Services and hopefully placed with a family member, Nick. Ali, that has to be such a tough assignment to see every day, day in, day out, because these are, at the end of the day, real people with real lives that have no resources whatsoever. Ali Bradley in Eagle Pass, Texas, thank you so much. Let's go to uh, some 350 miles southeast of Eagle Pass to Brownsville, Texas. News Nation's Brooke Schaefer is awaiting President Biden's arrival. And Brooke, this is the president's second visit to the southern border since taking office. And earlier, I spoke with the resident there who says, you know what, this is a little too little too late. Yeah, and you know, Nick, we've talked to people here who say they're hearing the criticism that maybe President Biden shouldn't be coming to Brownsville, but still they welcome it because they say, hey, there are issues here, too, that they want President Biden to see. The crisis at the border really taking center stage today, and we saw it play out just feet away from us. You are looking at video that my producer, Courtney, actually took on her cell phone. This happened right as we were going live on TV, and you can see there's a boat and a ladder. Border agents told us that group was trying to cross the border, smuggling in drugs. They were stopped and went back up the bank. But all of this happening just before President Joe Biden's visit to Brownsville, Texas. He'll spend about four hours here speaking with border agents and local authorities. Uh, President Biden today with this border backdrop, expecting to slam Republicans for blocking a bipartisan border deal. Uh, he wants that bill to be passed. He's expected to talk about that at length today here in Brownsville, Nick. And Brooke, one more question for you. President Biden already facing criticism about his decision to go to Brownsville instead of other border towns like you just mentioned. You've been talking to people who live there. And you said that some of them really do support his visit, others not so much. We also understand that some of the areas have been cleaned up, yes? Yeah, it's a bit of a mixed bag here. We did talk to one uh, resident here who said, oh, you should go check out the bus stop a few blocks away. That's usually where you see long lines of migrants. We went, we checked it out. It was pretty quiet today. Uh, not sure if that's a coincidence or not. Not sure if there are really coincidences in all of that. Uh, but, you know, Brownsville was once very much considered a hot spot for illegal immigration. Uh, this video that you're looking at was shot by our team here at News Nation here in Brownsville. This was last May, uh, but recently, Illegal border crossings have dropped sharply in this area. Border arrests in this sector last month were down 90% from July 2021. Uh, so President Biden will likely point to that as a win for his administration, while some Republicans are slamming the decision for President Biden to come to Brownsville instead of other border cities that are right now more overwhelmed. Nick? Brooke Schaefer live in Brownsville with images from Brownsville with the story that is affecting every corner of our nation. Brooke, thank you so much. For more on the border crisis, let's bring in Alex Gaggitano, White House correspondent for The Hill. Alex, I was just talk telling uh, Brooke that we're seeing the images out of Brownsville, Texas, but this has definitely become a political hot potato because we're seeing the effects in New York, Chicago, Denver. There is not a part of the country that has not been affected. That's right. That's why it's the timing of all of this is, you know, so notable because before, you know, we get to November, there's going to be so many communities, really every community across the U.S. feeling some sort of impact of this. Of course, it's important that the president and the former president, if he wants, goes and visits the border. But communities up in New York, you mentioned even Massachusetts, you know, as far from Texas as maybe you can get, are in, are being impacted. This is no longer an issue that's a not in my backyard, you know, uh, liberals can say, um, oh, this isn't a problem for us, so I don't really, you know, care or I don't, I don't agree with Texas policies or um, wherever else, because now it's affecting them and people are having stronger opinions on it. I think we're seeing more moderate Democrats start to have a harder opinion on it, too, which could either help or hurt Biden come November.
And Alex, one of the things I noticed even in my own reporting uh, here uh, in, in Chicago at News Nation headquarters, that when I uh, would enter the street and talk to people, there were so many who were not aware that there was a border crisis until buses started to arrive in cities like Chicago, arrive in New York, arrive in Denver. What do you believe has really been the crux of the political pressure? Is it the, the, the funding of the taxpayer dollars? Is it the images that we're seeing at the border? What is your reporting telling you? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, what is really, really causing this to be maybe the top political issue this election cycle? You know, I think the images are important, but I think the images of the buses going into cities, you know, here in D.C., we've seen images of um, or you can go walk down the street of buses arriving um, outside of Vice President Harris's house. You know, these these really notable, um, important, you know, uh, uh, visuals for people to witness that it's no longer just a crisis that's down in Texas or in Arizona. I think this is one of the first or this is the first election, major election, presidential, since the buses started heading up north, you know, in these mass numbers. And I think Governor Abbott um, and, you know, Governor DeSantis in Florida making these kinds of decisions, we'll see if it really pays off. But so far, it does seem like it is paying off for Republicans because just the rest of the country is now getting a feel for what other states deal with. Alex, last question for you with these dueling visits, one from former President Trump and one from Mr. Biden. What does success for this visit look like for each of them? Yeah, so I think success for Trump looks like keeping things the way it is. You know, if he can continue to talk to voters and say, Joe Biden is the problem of why there's a migrant crisis, vote for me again and I will, you know, curb the influx, build a wall whatever rhetoric he uses. I think for Biden, he's the real, he's really challenged here to figure out how to communicate with voters what he's been trying to for weeks, which is that Republicans are the problem. The Republican um, and Democrat negotiated Senate border deal got killed in the House largely because President Trump wanted it to get killed in the House. So Speaker Johnson said it's dead on arrival. And if if Biden could communicate that to voters and say, I tried, senators tried, and it didn't pass because Trump wanted to continue making this a political issue, that could resonate with voters. But so far, I think the messaging is an issue for them to try to get that, you know, very nuanced, very DC insider point across to people. Correspondent for the Hill, Alex Galgitano. Alex, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thanks, Nick. Absolutely. A federal judge is blocking a new Texas law that gives police the power to arrest migrants suspected of entering the country illegally. The ruling dealing a victory to the Biden administration in his ongoing feud with Texas Governor Greg Abbott. That new law was expected to begin in March, on March 5th, actually, and would have given migrants the opportunity to leave the country or face a misdemeanor charge. Texas officials are expected to appeal. And one of the various blazes burning out of control in the Texas Panhandle has now become the largest wildfire in state history. The Smokehouse Creek fire has torched more than one million acres and has even spread into neighboring Oklahoma. At least one death has been confirmed so far, that of an 83-year-old former school teacher who was unable to escape the flames. News Nation correspondent Evan Lambert is live in Texas at the Panhandle with what we're seeing right now. Uh, Evan, uh, you told me earlier that nature has assisted somewhat, but it has not been the panacea that firefighters are looking for. Right, Nick. So let me explain that. And we just popped out because we were looking for some additional damage, but we popped out to do this report with you right now. We have not seen in the last uh, 30 to 40 minutes or so any active fire or smoke between the area that we left and this area of Texas that we're in right now, which is Miami, Texas. And I just got off the phone with an official with the Texas A&M Forest Service. And essentially what they say is they are not ready to change the level of containment on especially this largest fire, the Smokehouse Creek Fire, because they are so worried that it could dry out. Things could dry out here just really within the next day or so, and that the fire could ignite again and easily jump a highway like this one here. And what we've been seeing over the last couple hours, and that's why I'm squinting, uh, is sleet. And you can see some of the frost or some of the remnants of the sleet here on 
the ground. But this, you know, even just picking it up right now, you know, this kind of grass here is still fairly, fairly dry. And so they're concerned that, you know, once things dry out tomorrow, this could pick up and easily jump a highway and start again. So they're not ready to change that level of containment, despite the fact that we aren't seeing any active smoke or flames. So that just sets the scene for you right there. Uh, Nick, you mentioned, you know, some of the fallout we have been showing over the last few hours, the damage to homes, dozens of homes in that area that we just left. We also know that there is one fatality. I spoke with the grandson of 83 year old Joyce Blankenship and he told me, you know, how much his grandmother meant to him and how he discovered that she was not able to make it out of her home. I want to have you listen to a little bit of what he told me on the phone a little bit earlier. One minute we're all sitting here, me and my mom playing games. And then the next thing you know, the sky's red, filled with smoke and we're being evacuated. She was so sweet. And like every time I went over there, it didn't like, matter if I had recently got in trouble and she heard about it, she was saying it's okay. Like, you know, we all mis make mistakes. And I'm just a, like a, a jumbled mess right now. So again, some good news momentarily. The fact that we don't see right now any smoke or flames in this area, but the containment level of especially this largest fire now in Texas history is still just at 3% because of the fact that it could quickly change when things dry out and ignite again. So that being the major concern here. Nick. That major concern, once again, you're telling us fire officials are not ready to raise that level of containment because things could change in an instant. Evan Lambert, live for us this afternoon. Evan, thank you so much. Joining me now is Amy Houston, Director, Rancher Navy for the Texas Farm and Ranch Disaster Relief. Um, Amy, one of the things Evan just talked about was how fire officials are not ready to increase the level of containment, even though weather seems to be aiding and assisting them right now. You've seen this play out before because you've had to help those in need. What are you hearing with those you're working with right now? That's a true statement. Uh, the, the landscape up there is such that a number of these fires can burn for a very long time and they will burn very hot. Um, the nature of the cedar trees and some of the other landscape there um, can burn for days and weeks on end. And the slightest wind can carry those flames and fan them to start right back up. So, you know, what we are learning is that this is not um, this is a marathon. This is not a sprint. Um, we will be sending aid for weeks to come. And Amy, you've not, again, help me, you've not seen anything like this before. I know that you've been with the agency and you've been working with in Texas, but you have not worked on a disaster this large before, have you? Not quite this of this magnitude, no. This is the largest fire um, in our state's history. Um, we have worked other fires that have been tens of thousands of acres, but not in the um, close to the million, million acre uh, mark that we are now. Amy, you talked about this being a marathon, not a sprint, because Texas Governor Abbott warned that the wildfires could grow in the coming days due to high temperatures and high winds. Are these conditions uh, still expected to be part of the problem or does it help you with your planning? Um, no, we are actually probably on call all the time. Um, the forecast that we are seeing is low humidities, high winds, warmer temperatures um, in the coming weeks, especially into the weekend. And um, I, we have not seen that there's a rain forecast for that area, at least in the next 10 days. So, um, you know, we're continuing to plan, continuing to take in aid and send it as, as the need has arise. And, and, and let's talk about some of that aid, because I know that one of the focuses is not only on the firefighters who may need a little bit of relief and assistance, but you also are working with those who have lost maybe property and the ability to care for their animals, correct? Correct. Um, a statistic that you may not be aware of is, is Texas has 11 million head of cattle wow. and 88 percent of those cattle are housed in the Panhandle area. So that equates to close to 9 million head of cattle in that area. Not that they were all affected, but that should give you kind of an idea of the numbers that we are we are working with there. And a lot of people have been displaced. They can't get out to take care of their animals. The um, maybe their hay or their cattle has their cattle feed has been burned up they don't have access to water so we are are trying to get them hay 
feed water trucks to get um, water to their animals at this time. Amy, two quick questions, and then I'll let you go. As of now, the fire is only 3% contained. What measures are being taken so that that containment uh, can actually aid you all in getting to uh, the resources and to uh, the animals and people in need? I have to say we have been working with our county commissioners, the county ag extension agents, as well as the county judges who um, will assist us with their fire departments getting to those locations that have been cut off to the rest of the public. And Amy, last question I have for you. Those of us who are sitting in places like Chicago or other areas who are watching News Nation right now, what can they do to assist you as you work to help others? Um, we do have a Facebook and Instagram page for Rancher Navy, where we have listed all of the needs um, and we where we will be taking items as well as how you can donate and how you can help. Amy Houston of Rancher Navy, we wish you all the best in a speedy recovery and hope that no more lives are lost in this tragedy. Amy, thank you so much. Thank you. Coming up, a daring rescue after a driver is stranded for days. How they found this car on the side of a cliff in California. You got to see this video of this rescue. It's something, it's absolutely amazing. And Russian President Vladimir Putin issues an ominous threat to the West. Stay out of Ukraine or face tragic consequences. Morning news shouldn't be this stiff, rigid thing. It should be a conversation. What are you and your family talking about at home around your dinner table? That's what I go for. Morning in America, starting at 6, 5 central, followed by News Nation Live. Planning to move? Join the 6 million families who discovered a smarter, more flexible way to move with pods. Save up to 20% now for a limited time. Whether you're moving across town or across the country, save up to 20% at pods.com today. Get help reaching your goals with J.P. Morgan Wealth Plan, the digital money coach in the Chase mobile app. Use it to set and track your goals, big and small, and see how changes you make today could help put them within reach. From your first big move to retiring poolside and the other goals along the way, Wealth Plan can help you get there. J.P. Morgan Wealth Management. An important message for Americans age 50 to 85. Oh my gosh, you're still using mom's old coffee pot. It's my inheritance. <laughs> well, it is a family heirloom. You know what? The kids can just sell it to pay for my funeral. <laughs> it's a good thing you have life insurance. Life insurance with our family history. Don't you know about Colonial Pen? It's guaranteed acceptance, whole life insurance with no medical questions asked. <laughs> I'm on a fixed income. Who isn't? You have it? We all do. John, Maria, even Paul, with all of his medical problems. Huh. Colonial Pen. That's right. Colonial Pen Life Insurance Company. As you get older, your health may change. Colonial Pen understands that. And we don't think it should keep you from getting life insurance to help protect your family. That's why we guarantee acceptance to everyone age 50 to 85. No health questions, no medical exam. Applying is easy. And you have your choice of options starting at $9.95 a month, a few dollars a week, 35 cents a day. And your price will never go up. A lifetime rate lock guarantees it. This protection can last a lifetime too. Some insurance policies end once you reach a certain age. Not this one. Pay your bill and it's yours to keep for as long as you'd like. How did you apply? Called for information, got an application, filled it out, sent it back. It, it took a few minutes. And look at this. They sent me this free beneficiary planner just for calling. I filled in all my important information and final wishes. Now my kids will have everything they need in one place. Ready to learn more? Call for free information and your free gift. There's no obligation. Every policy we issue comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You have nothing to lose. Why wait? Call now. Call 1-800-688-1023 for your free information and your free gift. That's 1-800-688-1023. There's no obligation. 1-800-688-1023. Call now. A man was rescued after spending two days on the side of a cliff in Big Sur, California. His car fell 400 feet down the side of a cliff. We can now share his rescue was successful after 
He was airlifted to safety. News Nation's Natasha Zuvez has more. Hey there, Nick. Yeah, we are getting this new video of the dramatic rescue off of the California coast. And Nick, imagine being stranded out there for two days. This man accidentally drove off the cliffside. He reportedly told first responders he was ejected through the sunroof as the car went down the hill. Now, the video showing the rescue, the injured man stranded out there in Big Sur after surviving the crash, and someone reported he didn't make it home. So California Highway Patrol did an aerial search and saw him waving a makeshift flag out there. He was rescued on Tuesday, 400 feet down the cliff, and we have an update. Officials say the man was taken to the hospital, but appears stable with moderate injuries. He's going to be okay, Nick. That is good news indeed. Natasha Zuvez, thank you so much. After the break, a News Nation exclusive with just five days from what some could say, what some say could be Nikki Haley's last chance for the GOP presidential nomination. We spoke with Haley about her candidacy and the future of the Republican Party. Next. Plus, the latest in the investigation into the illegal immigrant charged in the murder of a Georgia nursing student. What we've learned ahead. The Hill Sunday with Chris Starwalt. This Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern on News Nation. This year, I got serious about my taxes. I met with the TurboTax expert because I had two full-time jobs, lawyering and Miami, all on my own. Count on me, Mia. I'll file your taxes for you with 100% accuracy guaranteed. I'm too tired to smile. Make your moves count. Intuit TurboTax. Let a full-service expert do your taxes for you as soon as today. Hi, it's Christina again. I'm here to tell you about an all new special offer from my friends at Jacuzzi Bath Remodel that you don't wanna miss. You already know, Jacuzzi has been making water feel great for more than 65 years. And now they're bringing you this special TV offer. We're giving you 50% off installation and postponing all payments for up to one year. Jacuzzi Bath Remodel has a design you'll love at a price you can afford. And best of all, they can install it in as little as one day with no stress and no mess. Are you ready to see your new shower? Here it is. It's fabulous. Taking a shower had gone from being a joy to being a burden. I was afraid I would fall. I called in just one day. I had a shower I could feel safe in. No matter your situation, Jacuzzi Bath Remodel has a solution for you. From a safer, easy entry shower with features like grab bars and a custom seat to keep you feeling comfortable and independent at home to a stunning family bath, or how about a luxurious upgrade with a timeless design that will look great for years to come. Plus, they're built to last with a lifetime warranty from an iconic brand you know you can trust. <laughs> it was done in the same day. We did not have to wait. It's absolutely perfect. It's exactly what I was dreaming of. If you haven't already experienced what Jacuzzi Bath Remodel can do for you, your family, and your home, don't wait any longer. Now is the best time to call. It's never been easier. Take advantage of this special TV offer today. Call or go online right now for a very limited time offer. Only weeks left to get 50% off installation and no interest and no payments for up to one year, plus a free safety upgrade. Go to jacuzzibathremodel.com or call 800-617-7639. That's 800-617-7639. Call now. One out of every five pregnancies in the U.S. end in abortion. There is a person inside of me that's hanging on to dear life. An ultrasound is what saves lives, but they need your help to make free ultrasounds accessible through Preborn. Preborn is a nonprofit organization that provides life-saving ultrasounds to women considering abortion. They save 200 babies a day, but they need your help to save more precious lives. For only $28, your generous donation provides a free life-saving ultrasound to a woman in need. I was definitely going to abort that baby, and I didn't, and she's amazing. Donate to help rescue an innocent preborn child by scanning the QR code on your screen. Just use your phone's camera to scan the QR code and save a life today.
Russian President Vladimir Putin threatening the risk of global war and his country's use of nuclear weapons. Putin had strong rhetoric for the West during his annual parliamentary speech on Thursday, saying Russia is not afraid to use nuclear weapons if provoked. His comments come as Western countries worry if Putin has plans to invade another European nation, Moldova. News Nation's Robert Sherman is live in Tel Aviv with the latest. Robert, it feels like tensions between the West and Russia are nearing a boiling point with the Russian president's comments today stoking those flames. What else did Putin have to say? Yeah, Nick, without question, we have seen the way that the West and Russia have been butting heads over the last couple of years here. An important context piece here is, is that with Russian elections taking place next month and the war in Ukraine now hitting its two-year mark, the Russian president spent a good amount of his remarks today justifying the invasion of Ukraine, despite the fact that tens of thousands of Russian troops have been lost, according to U.S. estimates. But then there was also this element here. Earlier in the week, French President Emmanuel Macron made comments in which he said that it was not off the table, the possibility that NATO troops could be on the ground in Ukraine. Many other European leaders rejected those comments and distanced themselves from President Macron. But the Russian president issued this stern warning. Take a listen. They are talking about the possibility of sending NATO military contingents to Ukraine. But we remember the fate of those who once sent their contingents to our country. But now the consequences for possible interventionists will be much more tragic. Stern warning there from the Russian president, not mincing words. Something that he did not mention, though. Alexei Navalny, the opposition leader who was killed earlier uh, in this month. Uh, obviously, with these Russian elections taking place next month, there's a big focus on the geopolitical landscape in Russia. And as things stand right now, Putin is on track to cruise to a fifth term as Russian president. Nick? Robert, uh, quickly, I have a question for you. There's been a lot of tension surrounding Moldova. Uh, Western countries here, Russia, could be eyeing it next. Did the subject of Moldova or uh, Transnateria come up at all? No, it did not. And that's something that people were watching very closely here. And to take a look at this map in order to understand the context here. So you have uh, Transnistria, which is a breakaway region in Moldova. It's pro-Russian, has a president, has its own currency there. There are Russian troops on the ground there. There are concerns that that region could potentially be annexed by Russia. Why is that significant? To the east, you have Ukraine. To the west, you have Moldova, which currently has a government which is trying to be more European right now. This has European leaders very worried this week. Nick. Robert Sherman live for us this afternoon in Tel Aviv. Robert, thank you so much. Well, all along, Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley has said she would stay in the race against former President Trump until at least Super Tuesday. That pivotal day with 15 states spread all across the country will head to the polls is now just five days away. News Nation spoke exclusively with Haley ahead of those critical Super Tuesday contests on a wide range of topics, including her plans, depending on next week's results. Washington correspondent Kelly Meyer is live at the White House. Kelly, what did we hear from the former South Carolina governor with these critical primaries fast approaching? Yeah, and she's crisscrossing the country ahead of Super Tuesday. She just wrapped up an event in Richmond, Virginia. She'll be in Falls Church later and then Washington, D.C. tomorrow. But our Jackie Coppell talked with her one-on-one -on -one exclusively, as you said, for this wide-ranging interview, 13 minutes long, on a variety of topics, including the crisis at the border and the future of the Republican Party. She was also able to get Haley's first reaction to the Supreme Court deciding to take up Trump's immunity case. She told News Nation that she believes this is is a good thing. Here's why. I think we need to move quickly on this. But more than that, no person is immune from everything. You know, not a president, not anyone else. You can't just go and do whatever you want because you're the president of the United States. Haley, very busy ahead of Super Tuesday. As we said, she'll be in Washington, D.C. here tomorrow for a D.C. GOP event, then on to North Carolina and many more states, trying to get as much support as she can in that Super Tuesday nominating contest where over a dozen uh, voters in these states or uh, a dozen states are going to the polls.
Nick. Uh, Kelly, quickly, Super Tuesday could be obviously a decisive moment for uh, Ms. Haley. She did indicate what uh, did she indicate at all whether or not she will stay in the race. Uh, some are calling that would be her last stand. Yeah, it's a good question because all along she's been pointing to Super Tuesday. We'll wait until Super Tuesday. And really after that, it's been a question mark. What happens to her campaign? Will more donors start to fall off? The Trump campaign saying the math just isn't adding up for Haley. But here's what she had to say when we pressed her. Take a listen. What I'm looking at is Super Tuesday. That's our focus is Super Tuesday. It's what day we're having, what state we're in, and touching as many people as we can. That's as far as I've thought is what can we do in all of these states? As far as she's thought, she says. So really that question mark coming back into play. After Tuesday, we don't really know what will happen next for Haley's campaign. Nick. Kelly Meyer live at the White House this afternoon. Kelly, thank you so much. More details are coming out about the murder of a nursing student in Georgia. Lakin Riley was beaten to death last week while on a run on a UGA campus trail. Her body was found by investigators. Now, according to reports, Jose Ibarra, who was accused of killing Riley, has a history with police. News Nation's Alex Capriello is following the story and joins us live from Athens, Georgia. Alex, you were able to uncover new charges showing a history of criminal behavior from both Jose Ibarra and his brother, Diego. Yeah, that's right, Nick. I walked into the Superior and Municipal Courts here in Athens, Clark County, and was handed these documents, which show a long list of offenses from both brothers since they actually entered the U.S. illegally several years ago. Jose was cited for shoplifting from a Walmart here in Athens, caught on camera, and then by police with stolen food, clothing, and merchandise. His brother, Diego, has an even longer rap sheet. He was caught a second time for shoplifting shoplifting last December, and then last September, he was arrested for DUI, speeding, failure to yield to an emergency vehicle, driving without a valid license, and driving with an open container. After that shoplifting incident, Jose Ibarra never showed up to be fingerprinted. It's just one other example of how he slipped under the radar here locally. Alex, you can understand the frustration in all of this from people who live in the community. Uh, with all these criminal offenses, how come they were never deported? Yeah, this is the frustrations that we keep hearing boiling over from the people who actually live here. But basically, it comes down to the local law enforcement alerting the federal authorities, like the Department of Homeland Security, Immigrations and Custom Enforcement, so that way they know that there are people here that can be deported. I spoke to a source here with ICE, and he says that local law enforcement, talking about the police department and the sheriff's department, uh, have not actually honored ICE detainments for what he says were several years. Diego himself actually had a GPS tracker after he crossed into America illegally twice as part of what they call the ATD program. When he failed to meet the obligations as a part of that program, federal authorities just lost track of him. Here's that ICE statement. It says, on May 25th, 2023, Diego was removed from ATD and listed as an absconder from the program after GPS abnormalities. He has several arrests in 2023, the ones I just listed for you, like DUI and shoplifting, by the athens Clark County Police Department, where ICE detainers were not honored. And really, when I asked ICE about it, they told me this, which is basically that there are so many undocumented immigrants that are across our borders here in America. So it really is up to these local jurisdictions, these police departments and these sheriff's departments to actually notify ICE when they have someone within their custody, because if they are going to be released on bond, on bail, or the charges are gonna be dropped, well then ICE can actually swoop in, pick them up and deport them to wherever their home is. But when these local authorities fail to do that, it's easy to see why some of these people with bad behaviors, criminal behaviors, are just released right back into their communities. Alex, uh, no, you and I can agree on this. It should not take the death of a young woman to raise the red flag and show the flaws in this system. That's right, Nick. Alex Capriello live for us this afternoon. Alex, thank you so much. Well, coming up, a little autistic girl lost in a Florida swamp, how an aerial team tracked her down. And former President Trump touching down in Texas today for a first-hand look at the crisis at the border. We're live from Eagle Pass. Consumer Cellular, this is Sam. How may I help you? This is a butt dial. 
Well, somebody's butt. Just thought I'd let you know that with Consumer Cellular, you can get the same exact coverage as the leading carriers, but for up to half the price. Sleep more deeply and wake up rejuvenated. Purple Mattress's exclusive Gel Flex Grid draws away heat, relieves pressure, and instantly adapts. Sleep better, live purple. Right now, save up to $800 off mattress sets during Purple's President's Day sale. Visit purple.com or a store near you. I'm Jonathan Lawson. If you're 50 to 85, I have an important message about security. Write down the number on your screen so you can call when I finish. The lock I want to talk to you about isn't the one on your door. This is a lock for your life insurance, a rate lock that guarantees that once you're insured, your rate can never go up at any time for any reason. But be careful. Many policies you see do not have one. But you can get a lifetime rate lock from Colonial Pen. Call this number to learn more. This plan was designed with a rate lock for people on a fixed income who want life insurance that fits their budget and is simple to get. Coverage options start at $9.95 a month, less than 35 cents a day. Act now, and your rate will be locked in for life. It will never increase, guaranteed. This is lifelong coverage that can never be canceled as long as you pay your premiums, guaranteed. And your acceptance is guaranteed, with no health questions. You cannot be turned down because of your health. Call for your information kit and read about this rate lock for yourself. You'll also get a free beneficiary planner. Both are free with no obligation. Don't miss out. Call for information, then decide. Read about the 30-day 100% money-back guarantee. Don't wait. Call this number now. Call now and you will also get this free beneficiary planner. Use this valuable guide to record important information and your final wishes. And it's yours free just for calling. So don't wait. Call 1-800-377-5321 for your free information. That's 1-800-377-5321. There's no risk or obligation. That number again is 1-800-377-5321. That's 1-800-377-5321. So call now. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it, and folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge, from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The Secret War is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. At least 100 people were killed after chaos erupted during an aid delivery in Gaza. This is an aerial footage of the scene. Hundreds gathered to pick up food from groups early this morning, with some people swarming those trying to make the deliveries. As a result, many people were pushed, trampled, and run over by the trucks. Early reports say that more than 700 people were hurt. Amidst this chaos, the IDF says they opened fire on Palestinians who approached them killing as many as 104 people. Happening right now, the U.S. State Department is giving an update on that chaos. We're going to dip in and take a listen. Privately for weeks now about your push uh, for the Israelis to open a res crossing for uh, aid deliveries. How, how is that going? I don't have any updates on it other than it continues to be a high priority for us. And if you look at the situation today, the reason we have been pushing for an opening of a crossing uh, in northern Gaza is because we know that the situation there is incredibly dire. Even when you've had assistance flowing, it, uh, not enough assistance flowing ever, but certainly over the last past, past few weeks, not enough assistance flowing in the south, at least there has been assistance getting in. The situation in the north has been much more difficult because of the difficulty of trucks traveling all the way from the south to the north and the difficulty of guarding those trucks, which I think is one of the things that, that um, we saw today. Um, so we continue to push for a northern crossing to be open. It continues to be a high priority for us, but I don't have an update on it. 
Thank you. Uh, Sean, could, 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 some elements of that. Uh, you're talking about the safe uh, delivery of aid. Um, the Israeli military being there, I mean, do you have an idea what what the situation was, and is this uh, it, it, are, are there risks in, uh, in in this in itself, and having the military so closely um, near aid delivery? I, I don't have any updates other than what I've seen the the Israeli military say publicly, which is that there were. Um, uh, military station there, not as part of the aid, but I think it was either as a checkpoint or a normal um, uh, military staging facility. So uh, I think the, the uh, obviously, whenever you have a military operating in any area, you have a risk of misunderstanding, you have a risk of miscalculation, you have a risk of civ civilian casualties. That is an ongoing risk as long as there is a, uh, an ongoing military operation. But you also see that risk increase now because of, as I said earlier, how desperate people are, right? Just, just look at the footage and you can tell. You can see the, the people swarming those trucks are desperate. They need food. And so whenever you have that situ kind of situation, you have the risk not just of, of harm from military action that goes wrong and, and unfolds in a way that no one anticipates or no one wants, but you also have uh, a heightened risk of accident. You have a heightened risk of, of criminal activity. You have all of these heightened um, risks to innocent people who are just trying to get food and water and medicine and things that they need to feed their families uh, and, and make their families comfortable and try to keep their families safe. And so that's why you keep, hear me keep saying we are trying so hard to get this temporary ceasefire agreement to release the hostages because it would do so much to alleviate every problem that the Palestinian people are facing now. It would allow us to get more aid in. It would allow aid to be delivered safely throughout Gaza, and it would allow people in Gaza more freedom of movement to move around and get to aid and get to their homes and get to their neighborhoods. So it is urgent that this agreement be reached, and that is why you see the President and the Secretary and others in the United States government pushing so hard to get it over the finish line. You're listening just, to you State that? Department Secretary uh, Spokesperson Matt Miller uh, talk about the events that unfolded in Gaza after uh, aid was attempted to be delivered and it broke out into chaos with more than 100 people uh, killed, including those who were shot by IDF forces. We will, of course, continue to follow that story at NewsNationNow.com. A disease thought to be eliminated from the U.S. 24 years ago is making an alarming comeback. There have already been 36 cases of measles reported across 15 states this year compared to 58 cases in all of last year, and it's only February. Florida is dealing with the largest outbreak of the highly infectious disease. There are already 10 confirmed cases there, with seven only in one elementary school, and the state's top doctor is now under fire for his policies around the disease. Florida Surgeon General Joseph Ladapo is breaking with 50 years of federal guidance by not recommending vaccines or requiring non-vaccinated children to stay home to avoid the spread. Joining me now is medical expert Dr. Frida Fisher. We call her Dr. Frida here. She is a friend of the show. I want to thank you for joining us because the minute you and I talked offline about the spread of measles, you said, Nick, we need to get the message out there. What is your reaction, first of all, to the Florida Surgeon General telling parents, oh, don't keep your kids at home if they are not vaccinated? Hi, Nick. This is unbelievable. It's unbelievable because we have the evidence beta. We have the evidence based data that absolutely shows us that measles are preventable. And it looks like the Surgeon General is looking at all of the evidence and going against it. And he's putting families at harm. We absolutely know that measles was eradicated in this country, we thought, in the year 2000. And we know that if you get both of the measles, the MMR vaccines, you are almost 100 percent, over 97 percent, surely you won't get the measles if you get the vaccine. And here's the good thing. Even for people, those children who have not been vaccinated, if they go and get the vaccine within, within three days of exposure, they can still be protected from the measles. And so it shouldn't be a, hey, parents, it's up to you. This is public health. Absolutely, if your child has been exposed and they have not been vaccinated, they should get vaccinated within three days and be quarantined for 21 days after exposure. We have the answer. It just has to be implemented in Florida. Dr. Fried, is the risk only to children or is it also to adults? It's to anyone who is not vaccinated and it's to people who are immunocompromised, even if they have been vaccinated. And here's the thing, Nick. Measles is one of the most contagious viruses 
out there. If you're unvaccinated and you're exposed, you have a nine out of 10 chance of getting the disease. In fact, you can walk into a space and if someone who has measles was there even two hours ago, it's so infectious that you could still get the measles. And sure, you can get runny nose, you can get cough, you can get rash, but you can also get brain infection, encephalitis. You could go blind, you could go deaf, you could die. Many people were dying before we got vaccinated, but now we have the answer, and it just boggles me on why someone who is the Surgeon General won't protect this country. Dr. Frieda, I don't want to put you in a political space, but do you believe that the word vaccine has become a four-letter word, and that has instilled some fear in some parents? Unfortunately, it has in many cases, and we saw it happen after the pandemic and with questions about the COVID vaccine. People started going back and questioning everything and putting out disinformation. But the truth of the matter is this. Before vaccines, we had people dying from measles, mumps, rubella, smallpox. And the reason now we have so many people who have the luxury of thinking that vaccines are bad is because they did not live in the times when these infectious diseases killed people. But if we keep up and if people stop getting vaccines and they start allowing these infections to flare, then they'll understand why we got the vaccines in the first place. People need to educate themselves, follow the evidence-based medicine, the CDC, physicians you trust, and definitely, if you have not been vaccinated for the measles, get the MMR vaccine. If you've been exposed, quarantine for 21 days and get vaccinated within three days of exposure. That is a must. Dr. Frieda, I have less than 30 seconds, but I have one more question for you. We're also learning that if you received the vaccination in the 70s or 80s, it may not still offer the same protection. If people were vaccinated as kids, what's the best way for them to make sure it's still effective? Best way, go to your physician. There are blood tests we can do to find out if you're still immune to measles. If you're not, hey, we'll give you another vaccine and you will be protected. Dr. Frida Fisher joining us once again today. Dr. Frida, thank you so much. My pleasure. Up next, the Stanley Cup to the rescue. How the tumbler took a bullet for a woman when shots rang out inside her house. And a volcanic eruption, how the spewing ash is impacting flights out of Mexico City ahead. This week, CW Courtside Saturday is back in prime time oh! with back-to-back -back ACC action. The hammer. CW Courtside Saturday. It all tips off this week at 5.30 Eastern, 2.30 Pacific. We all know that words have power. They set things in motion. And make us happy or sad. But there's one word that stands out because when people say it, lives are changed. It's not a big word. It's itsy bitsy. It's only three little letters. But when you say it, the life of a kid like me can be changed. So, what is this special word? It may surprise you. It's yes. 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 Yes to becoming a monthly supporter of Shriners Hospitals for Children. That's right. Your monthly support allows the doctors and nurses at Shriners Hospitals for Children to give the most amazing care anywhere and change the lives of kids like me. And me. And me. Because people like you have said, yes, now I can play football. And I can play catch. And I can walk. So what do you say? Will you say yes right now? It's so easy. All you have to do is pick up the phone or go to loveshriners.org right now and say yes. When you say yes to giving just $19 a month, only 63 cents a day, we'll send you this adorable love to the rescue blanket as a reminder of all the kids you're helping every day. My life is filled with possibility because of the monthly support of people just like you who called the number on your screen and said yes. 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 Yes, your yes is making a difference in my life and the lives of so many other kids like me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving. Please call or go online now. If operators are busy, call again or go to loveshriners.org to say yes right away. <laughs> Being in debt was just such a challenge as a working single mom. I was working three jobs just to make ends meet. 
I knew I wasn't going to be able to get out of debt by myself. National Debt Relief negotiated with my creditors and reduced my debt by half. National Debt Relief can significantly reduce the amount you owe. National Debt Relief got me out of debt. I feel like I'm in control again. I feel like I'm taking my life back now. Call or visit nationaldebtrelief.com to get started. Right now, you can get a free foot long at Subway. Just buy any foot long in the app and get one free. Just scan the QR code and enter promo code FLBOGO. It only works on the other side of the screen, buddy. You still got a landline in your house. Order now on the Subway app. When things go sideways, will you be prepared? I want to introduce you to the Patriot Power Generator 2000X. Use the endless free power of the sun to power lights, your TV, medical equipment, even run your fridge. And that's without gas, fumes, or noise. Go to 4 You'll get a solar panel included free. Double the capacity, expandable for more power and more outlets than ever. This is about peace of mind. Get your solar generator and free panel at 4 Cars will break down. And when they do, it's too late. If your car is out of warranty, it leaves you with two choices. Get stuck paying for expensive repairs or one phone call to CarShield. Their administrators pay for your covered repairs so you don't have to. Your coverage includes roadside assistance, towing, rental, and so much more. Plus, with their nationwide network, you choose the mechanic or dealer. Best of all, there's coverage for every wallet size. Make the smart call before it's too late. Call CarShield today. Hey, welcome back to you. I'm Natasha Zubess with more of today's headlines and the stories coming into our newsroom right now. There is a warning going out right now to parents in Delphi, Indiana. Police putting out this social media alert for parents to check their kids' phones, to be aware of who they're spending time with. Two 15-year-old girls met a 24-year-old male stranger in the woods to smoke weed. The girls met him through Snapchat and told him that they were 19. Now, police are crediting an aware citizen who called them after seeing the man and the two girls going into the woods alone. As you'll recall, the incident is chilling in its similarity to the two young girls who were found murdered in Delphi in the woods back in 2017. An Ohio woman says that her Stanley Tumblr saved her life. Take a look at the video damage to her cup there, but not much. The woman posted this on TikTok and said she heard seven to eight gunshots out front when an errant bullet came through her house. It ricocheted off the Stanley. That Tumblr was right in front of her. Police verified what happened, noting several bullet holes inside of her house. The Stanley Tumblrs have recently enjoyed viral popularity. Well, flights in and out of Mexico City are being impacted by a volcanic eruption just 50 miles from the country's capital. At least 20-some flights have been canceled so far. Others have to be rerouted because of safety concerns around the ash, not just visibility, but also reports of ash getting into the fuselage and coating the wings. The volcano, called Popo by locals, started erupting on Tuesday. And a miracle, a little five-year-old girl with autism found safely with the help of this aerial team. Thermal imaging guided Tampa authorities on the ground to a wooded area where she was found. That search taking less than one hour. Hey! Wow, that is video of the rescue. Around dusk, the family realized that their daughter wasn't at a neighbor's house and couldn't be found. Rescue teams worked quickly before the sun set. And we do want to clarify, parents gave the okay to show their daughter's face in this video. We are hearing now that little girl is in good health. All right, we are tracking this two presidents, one long southern border. President Biden and former President Trump both in Texas today to take on the migrant crisis. We are live in the Lone Star State. Stay with us. I'm Jonathan Lawson, here to tell you about life insurance through the Colonial Pen Program. If you're age 50 to 85 and looking to buy life insurance on a fixed budget, remember the three Ps. The three what? The three P's. What are the three P's? The three P's of life insurance on a fixed budget are price, price, and price. A price you can afford, a price that can't increase, and a price that fits your budget. I'm 54 and was a smoker, but quit. What's my price? 
you can get coverage for $9.95 a month. I'm 65, retired, and take medications. What's my price? Also $9.95 a month. I just turned 80, and I'm on a fixed income. What's my price? $9.95 a month for you two. If you're age 50 to 85, call now about the number one most popular whole life insurance plan available through the Colonial Pen Program. Options start at $9.95 a month. That's less than 35 cents a day. You cannot be turned down because of your health. No medical exam, no health questions. Your acceptance is guaranteed. And this plan has a guaranteed lifetime rate lock. So your rate can never go up for any reason. Options start at $9.95 a month. Plus, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. So call now for free information, and you'll also get this free beneficiary planner. Use this